Hi, I'm Sarah. Welcome back to my channel. This is apparently part two in my series about why I spend so much money on books. So last year I recorded every book I purchased in the month of October and how much I spent. And at the end of the month, I did a tally and then had to face some hard truths about my book spending. And at the time, you know, I made some excuses. I really did. I told myself that it was because of circumstances and Prime Day and just other stuff that doesn't happen every single month. So I decided to do it again to see if I got similar results and to try and see if I could target where exactly what exactly is happening to me. And I'm just gonna spoil things a little bit for you here. Um, for the month of June, I spent almost the exact same amount as I did last year in October. So like it was within $10, it was close. Do I have more excuses? Yes, I do. Before I get into that, I do wanna mention in that video, I talked about how I wasn't gonna buy any books for the month of December. For the most part, I did keep my word on that. I did not buy books for the majority of the month of December. What did happen there was I ended up getting my wisdom te tooth. I had one wisdom tooth. I ended up getting that removed at the end of December. I think literally like December 29th or 30th or something like that. And I had been putting that off for over 10 years and I was feeling very pleased with, but also very sorry for myself and allowed myself to go to sell or Goodwill, I think, where I ended up buying like $17 worth of books. So my spending for that month was very low, but it was not zero. All right, but let's get into what I spent this month or last month in June and what I bought and why I have so little self-control. So first off was my book of the month. I actually asked for last year for my birthday or this year, I guess it was for my birthday. I asked for a year's worth of book of the month credits. So my main book every month is paid for. So that did not cost me any money. My main book um, for June was The Maidens. However, I did add on One Last Stop and that cost me ten fifty nine. And I don't have that to show you because I already loaned it to my friend Allison because I just, I have so many books to read right now. And I was like, I am not, I wanted to get to it soon, but I was like, I'm, I'm not going to. So she was interested in it. I told her, go ahead, you read it first. And that went down on June 2nd. On June 3rd, I went to Salvation Army where I spent $1.96. I have the receipt right here for proof. That was student discount day. So I got five books for 37 cents each. I have them right here. I think this is them. So three of these are from the Gone series by Michael Grant. Michael Grant, as I have mentioned several times, and he's gonna come up again in this video, is one of the co-authors of the Animorph series, which is like one of my ride or die, like, you know how some people feel like Harry Potter was like that book series for them that shaped them? I'm a little older than some of those people. And before I had Harry Potter, I had Animorphs. I can directly see how that book, themes of that book influenced me as a person. And so Michael Grant wrote another young adult series called Gone. And I read the first one on Kindle a few years ago and I liked it, but I never really continued. And I happened to spy randomly three of them and actually, this I believe is the second one and I think this is the third one and then this is one of the later ones so it's kind of not quite in order but I have read the first one and now I've got the second and third and then this later one so it, 37 cents each I was like this is a series I actually would like to have and read and have physical copies of so I went ahead and picked up those I, I know nothing about this but New York Times book review so that's why I got that and then, okay, so this I actually also, I already own this and I have a hardcover, hardcover version. This is a mystery thriller. I read one of the other books by this. I believe it's another, an author duo. Oh yeah, it says it right on the cover, sorry. This was a book of the month and I see it a lot in the book of the month swap groups, the hardcover one, people swap that one. So I bought this paperback one for 37 cents and I was like, you know what I could do is I could actually use the hardcover copy I already have and like swap it. I, don't, I do book swaps with people on Facebook, like book of the month books, where when I've read a book and I'm done with it, I mail somebody and they mail me one of their books. And I was like, oh, I can be the, if I have the paperback, then I can swap the hardcover, which I probably also paid 50 cents for and get a different book. And I just have to pay like the put in and faulty logic, but this. And then on June 11th, it looks like I hit Salvation Army and Goodwill. I believe I went there with my friends Allison and Emily while they were in town because they always watch my videos. And I took them to see my Goodwill and my Salvation Army. And it says I spent two twelve, So I must have got four books. Okay, I got this. It's by the author of The Alice Network. 
which I think is her most popular book. I read that a few years ago. I thought it was good. Decided to try out the other book by the author. This one I've read most of the Kristen Hannah's. Um, I've read this one on, you know, Kindle from the library a few years ago. I'm like, look how pretty this is. This is in such good shape and it was 50 cents. I honestly just wanted to line it up next to The Great Alone, which I liked a lot better. Most people like this one, but this is World War II. Me and World War II books. Ugh. Kristen Hannah, I feel like her thing is that in her books, anything bad that could possibly happen will happen to her main characters. And this book was like anything bad you could possibly think of from World War II happens to these two main characters. <laughs> but it, it was okay. But I, enough that I was like, oh yeah, I'll get a copy. Pippin wants to be in here with me, which is fine, but he like won't sit still. So his little, his little nails, you can hear him going pitter patter in the background every second of the video. And also he's like getting into stuff. So I'm gonna let him stay up here. And if he, if he isn't good, he's gonna get put in the other bedroom. All right, where, where was I? Uh, Force of Nature, Jane Harper. This is the second in a series. I just read the first one, liked it. I've heard this one's actually better. So that's where we are there. This series follows a FB, he's like the, he's like an FBI agent in Australia. I can't remember what it, if it's called the, it's not the FBI. It's like, cause that's American, something else. Whatever the FBI equivalent in Australia is. Is it the FBI? What else is he's a federal agent? I'm curious where this goes because in the first book series, it was like him going back to his hometown and it was like deeply personal and everything wrapped up. So I'm curious if this has anything to do with any of those characters. I think it's just a completely different story, but book I've already read, got the sequel. And then this is another book of the month copy. I always pick these up because if I like them, you know, then I have the cute book of the month copy to line up with my other book of the month copies. And if I don't like them, the book of the month swap groups are very active. If you're a book of the month person and you're not like a huge collector, or if you're like me and you like to collect some of them, but not all of them, the Facebook swap groups are really good. I've had a lot of good luck. You can ship the books for media mail, which is like only $3 or $3.85, I think it usually is for me. Yeah, you just find somebody that wants the book you have and that has the book that you want and you just swap them to each other. So this is a mystery thriller. I believe it's about a stalker and someone actually left their, their book of the month bookmark in it too. So yeah, all those from Salvation Army were two twelve, dollars And then the same day I went to Goodwill and I spent two fifty. dollars I got this nonfiction memoir about an intersex person. So then a couple days later on June 14th, Target was having a buy two, get one, three, get one free sale. And I ended up getting second, third and fourth books from the Wayward Children series. So I read the first one, I got it from a little free library and I really liked it. And they're short, they're kind of novella length. I just got the next ones because it's on sale. These three together were 2658 for all three of them. It's a book series about these kids that they have previously been in other dimensions and now they're back here in this dimension and can't get back to their other dimensions and they're at the school together. I really liked the first one. It's hard to describe. It's really weird. It's such a weird thing. And the books are so short too, or at least the first one was. There's such a huge idea and a huge thing. Like these kids that have slipped into these other dimensions. Like that was my, I wanted more. Like I think I would have probably liked the book better if it hadn't been a novella, but I did like it and I wanted, I wanted more. So I got these. On June 14th also, I do this too much. I, I buy one thing and I'm like, I want to buy more. I bought this, The Way of the Stars off Amazon. I bought it used. It cost me $6.24. This actually came as a library copy and I was able to remove the library binding. And you, honestly, yeah, I don't think you can tell. I bought so many books this month that I'm like really excited to read. And then just, uh, all these circumstances, I haven't been able to read like barely any of them, but bought this. Then on June 17th, I went to the local book sale. They have it. I think a couple times a year. I went once two years ago because last year of COVID and everything didn't happen, but just this huge book sale. They'll have boxes of boxes of books everywhere and you gotta like dig and nothing's organized and all books are a dollar. And I got six books of that. I made a TikTok about it. I might insert a little of the TikTok. These are the six books I got. It cost me $6.36. There I was watching God. I read this 
10 years ago uh, at the time I, when I read it, it was just a library, I had it as a library book. So it's just in really nice shape and it's got pretty little foiling on the cover. So I decided to get a physical copy of it. This I was actually really excited about. This is one of the books from my childhood that I bought this as when I was a kid at a Goodwill and I loved this thing. It's such a weird, like this would never be published today. It's so weird. It's like a middle grade book. I remember there's references like pot in it and I had no idea what it was talking about because I think it called it grass or something. Like they were talking about planting grass on somebody and I thought like literally like grass seeds and dirt. I was like, what the, I don't understand. But yeah, this is one of my favorite books when I was a kid. This, is, this was the first time I'd ever seen a copy of it and they had like 20 copies. I think, see there's a number on this. I think a class probably read this like in school, which is interesting because like I said, there's some, this is definitely a very young book. You can tell it's for a young audience, but there's some like mature themes. I think the girl's father, if I remember correctly, was like very emotionally abusive. Oh yeah, this was an elementary school. They must've had like multiple copies that they numbered. When was this written? Yeah, this was originally written in 1974. It's hard for me to picture a modern day classroom, like especially an elementary school class, like reading this. I was really happy to find a copy because I've never, my copy got destroyed or lost or something. I've never seen any, I've never seen it since. So I got John Grisham, A Time for Mercy. This was another one. This was originally in library binding, but I managed to take that off. All that's left is this little stamp at the top there. So this one just came out last year. This is a sequel to a Time to Kill, which I believe was John Grisham's first book, which I read years ago and enjoyed. I did not realize he actually wrote another book featuring that main, that character from A Time to Kill. I think it's called Sycamore Row. And I did not realize that that was also a sequel to A Time to Kill. So now I'm on the lookout for that one. I really wanted this. I like John Grisham. My mom really likes John Grisham and my sister. So this might be one that gets passed around. The sequel to this just came out, which is fun. I've never read it. I don't mind the easy to read, cheap kind of mystery thriller James Patterson writes or ghost writes anyway and I've, I've heard this one's quite good. I've never read anything by this author but she has another book coming out this year that's like very hyped so I thought I'd get this one by her. Mystery thriller of course. And then I did not expect to find it but I actually got a copy of Midnight Sun at this thing. At this used book sale as with any used book store or thrift store or anything. There were multiple copies of all the Twilight books, but I did not actually expect there to be Midnight Sun since it just came out last year. Dust cover is missing. I got this mostly as a reference. Obviously I read Miss I read Midnight Sun last year. I've talked about that kind of extensively on this YouTube channel. So I don't I haven't read the Twilight books in years. I think I only read each of them once. I'm pretty sure. This has been supported by my sister and I were talking about something that happened in like Eclipse and I realized my memory of a lot of it was completely off. I have kind of considered doing a Twilight reread at some point and other videos that I thought might be interesting with like Twilight centered content. So I have all the books as a reference and now I have this as well. Now I have a physical one that I can like highlight and write all over and tab if I need to, you know, underline shit to remember how bad it was. Only a dollar, 0% of which goes to Stephanie Meyer. And then on June 18th, I bought, so I had Audible for a while and you know how Audible works is like every month you get a credit for an audiobook that you then get to like keep in your audio library. And then there's also, also a bunch of other Audible books that you can listen to with your membership. I had it for a little while. I canceled just because I don't listen to that many audiobooks and you can also get them from the library. But I wanted a copy of the Michael Grant book, Front Lines which I believe I had actually purchased the physical copy of in my video that I did back in October where I kept track of how much money I spent on books. And I had started that one and I didn't get past the first few chapters and I was looking for a new audiobook. So I like to always have one audiobook going for car rides, cleaning, just stuff. I was like, you know what? I wanna read this Frontlines one and I've got too much other stuff going on. I'm gonna see if there's an audiobook. And there was, but the only place I could get it was Audible. And then also Audible ha was offering some deal where it was like, if you rejoin, your credits will be $6.95 for four months. So I'm like, fine. So I joined it, which means I got the audiobook for Frontlines for $6.95. And then Prime Day happened. And I swear to God, I did not, I don't know how many times a year Prime Day happens. I thought it was once. Apparently it's at least twice because last time I did this video was in October and somehow it was also Prime Day. And 
Prime Day got me again. It got me hard. I picked up two newish books, Cemetery Boys and Firekeeper's Daughter, 858. And this ended up being, I think it was 905. It was one of those things, they were both marked down quite a bit from the normal prices. And then they were also buy one, get one half off. This was also Prime Day. I got Six of Crows in Crooked Kingdom. I read Six of Crows sometime last year. I thought it was okay. I was interested in reading the sequel because I did kind of want to finish the story because it is pretty involved. Like this is a long book. There's a lot of like exposition and explaining. And once I got through all that, I was like, I kind of do want to finish it. Of course, I think this one's even bigger. Yeah, it is. But I read this one on Kindle and I was like, there's no way I am going to remember everything. So I bought this one and this one. So I'd have this as a reference while I was reading this. I got the two of these together for 1238. And then finally, okay, not finally, I still got like three things left, Jesus Christ. My local library opened back up and they have a used bookstore inside of it that's open most of the time. And I purchased five books the first day I went back, which was June 31st. No, June 31st doesn't even exist. It was June 21st. I got this one. I don't know what this is. It's some kind of sci-fi space. I'm pretty sure it's YA. Really cute cover signed by the author and it was two dollars. Lisa Jewell, I read, uh, and then she was gone recently, quite liked it. I've also read The Family Upstairs. This was a dollar. This one is so pretty. Look at this. This is a YA book. I have no idea what it's about. This was three dollars. This is actually one of my favorite Jennifer Weiners. I don't know why. I, I in no way like relate to this. It's about a woman that gets addicted to um, alcohol and opioids while like coping with motherhood i just really enjoyed the way like she took her time with like the slippery slope of like oh i'll just take a couple of xanax here or, like oh i'll just take a couple of these vicodin and how it escalates into full-blown addiction and how like that can really happen to anybody you know even if you're like a well-off middle-aged housewife i thought this was one of her better books and i had only previously read on kindle and have a physical copy so picked it up it was two dollars and then another really cute book of the month this is a ya one the YA ones at the little um, library bookstore tend to be marked down cheaper. So this was 50 cents, sci-fi, cute cover. And then I went back on a different day and I spent 350 on Normal People. I believe there's a Hulu TV show about this. I think it's, the main characters are Irish and I think it's just a modern day romance. So I paid $3 for this. I have so many books that are falling all over me. And then this is another sci-fi one. This one's YA or maybe it's even middle grade. And this was 50 cents. So I spent 350 that day. And then the final thing I bought for the month of June, and I didn't even technically like purchase this in June. I actually pre-ordered it, I think back in May when Target was having a buy one, get one free sale. But because it came out in June, that's when my credit card actually got charged for $14.02. And that is Survive the Night by Riley Sager. This has been out for like a week, a week today. And I am only... 23 pages into it because I've been reading other books because this came out June 29th. I had June 29th and 30th like blocked out where I was just going to be reading this book and not doing anything else with my life. And yeah, if you're pre-ordering to have the book delivered to you the day it comes out, Target will not do that for you. Target will ship it the day it comes out. Amazon will deliver it to your Amazon will practically come in your house and put it on your bookshelf for you the day it comes out. So that is everything. My total was $117.21. <sighs> I believe my total back in October was 126. Are there circumstances? Kind of. I finished school and I'm unemployed at the moment, so I'm sitting around with not much else to do other than maybe go to Salvation Army or, and honestly, $117 for the whole month with the number of like shopping trips I had. 117 is not bad at all. I don't even know how many books is this. I think that's 35 books I bought, which, uh, that's, that's a, I did read 13 books in the month of June. So if you look at it as I read 13 books and I spent $117, that's about right. If you consider a book to be an average cost of about $10, that math isn't too bad. Uh, if you look at it as I read 13 books in June, but I apparently purchased 35. And a couple of these were books I've already read that I just wanted to own physical copies of. So it's not like it's adding to my to be read list or anything. But yeah, that's a that's questionable. Um, we are in July. I had originally planned to do or I thought about doing like a no buy. I thought it'd be really cute, you know, like no buy July. 
but I'm going to Boston tomorrow and one of the things I was really looking forward to do with my sister was going to some used bookstores and goodwilling and thrifting and we're also going to New York and I really want to go to I don't know if we'll get to but I want to go to like that um I think it's called like the strand the stand the like famous bookstore in New York like I'd like to go there and like I just don't want to restrict myself but I am going to be trying to cut back and I definitely did go to Salvation Army and buy like two books yesterday, but like work's gonna be done on this. I don't know. I guess I don't really have a good conclusion for all of this other than I should really stop buying so many books just because I'm, I am legitimately try, kind of running out of places to put them. <laughs> like even right now, I'm just sitting here, but can you like, look, it's not even, it's not even all of them. Like I said, like one of them's an audiobook. Some are with ones with my, friend. I, I have too many books. I'm running out of shelf space. I'm gonna need to do, do another no buy month and then I don't know if they help though. Like maybe they're good for that month but really it just means that when the month ends I'm like oh, I want to buy more books. I don't know. I guess I haven't really come to any conclusions here except that um, I'm definitely spending too much money and the number of books I have coming in the house is too many. So something needs to be done there. And also I need to read some of these books before I buy any more. I'm gonna work on that. I am doing a video where I'm gonna select my TBR solely from books that I already own. So <laughs> I have a couple of videos planned, see them soon. I'm gonna be making my way through some of these books that I have. I don't know, if you're watching this comment down below, tell me how many books you buy a month and how many books you read a month. And like, we all know that shopping for books and reading books are two very different hobbies. And I do aggressively participate in both of them. I do read a lot of books, but I also buy too many. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye.